For millennia, stone circles in Ireland and Britain have watched over the country and are a tangible, if enigmatic, testimony to the past. They still connect us today with the ancestors who built them and at the same time make it clear how much we no longer know about them and their rituals. Stone circles have also fascinated people long before Claire Fraser travelled through time in the hit TV show Outlander. Ireland, along with England and Scotland, is one of the countries with the most stone circles. To this day, stone circles are puzzling researchers. With the help of various theses, archaeologists and historians try to explain the exact function and origin of the monuments, but some things have so far remained in the dark. Ireland's stone circles are not quite as famous as their British counterparts, such as Stonehenge, and Irish stone circles are usually smaller in diameter and are not surrounded by huge ritual structures. What is striking, however, is that of the 187 stone circles in Ireland, over 100 are in County Cork in the southwest of Ireland. Today, I visited three close to where I live in West Wicklow. According to one study, the majority of all stone circles in Scotland are aligned with celestial phenomena and assume that stone circles served as observatories from which one could observe the sunrise and moonrise on such important days as the equinox. Other researchers consider the astronomical function of these monuments to be overrated. They focus on the importance of the stone circles to the community. To erect such a monument was truly a mammoth undertaking. Rocks weighing tons were sometimes transported huge distances. To do this, work had to be coordinated and a common vision motivated those involved. In addition, enough food had to be available for the workers who could not help with hunting or farming during the construction. These large-scale collaborative projects helped people develop a common identity. While another study is of the opinion that stone circles served as ritual celebrations, finds of numerous animal bones indicate that people held large feasts near the stone circles in the early days. Here, they could not only come together as a community, but also display their status and find partners from other groups. This stone circle is called the Piper Stones. The circle has 14 granite boulders, some upright and some lying flat. A large stone stands outside the circle to the east, called an outlier. Grooves and cup marks have been carved onto some of the stones. Stone circles like this were built in the latter Bronze Age, that is 14 to 800 years BC. The monument gets its name from the legend of the Piper, represented by the large stone outlier, and his dancers, the other stones, were turned into stone for having entertained themselves on the Sabbath day. There is a similar tradition for another stone circle in the area. However, there is a clue in the name of this area, which is Athgraney, which translates into English as Field of Sun. So you can see here at the Piper Stones, there is a hawthorn tree growing and there is a tradition in Ireland of tying a rag of a piece of clothing belonging to somebody who is either sick or is having problems in their lives in the hope that as the piece of cloth rots away, so too does the illness or the problem that that person may be having, in the hope that they're tapping into the magic that is associated with some of these places. And although an old tradition, my own personal observation is this has become more common in recent years. Hawthorne trees were sacred to the Celts and are associated with the gathering of fairies today. Even here, beside the Piper Stones, a digger has been very careful in its work clearing scrub not to disturb the Hawthorns. Castle Ruddery Stone Circle is located close to the Piper Stones we have just visited. The site belongs to one of the rarest ceremonial monument types in Ireland. The site is known locally as a stone circle, but is more properly belongs to a type of monument called an embanked enclosure or henge. Sites such as this type were being constructed in about 2,500 BC, in the late Neolithic and early Bronze period. The site consists of an earthen bank 30 metres in diameter, lined on the interior with 29 upright stones, 
The entrance at the southeast of the enclosure is formed by two massive quartz boulders. The enclosure is surrounded by an outer ditch, some 60 metres in diameter, which is now only visible from the air. <coughs> so this circle has the most amazing stones. The most impressive are the portal stones, weighing in at 15 tonnes each. They are massive white quartz recumbent stones that mark the east entry into the circle. Quartz was significant in druidic circles. It reflected light and rather than absorbing it and quartz retains energy and absorbs energies from its surroundings. It is said that druids still use Castle Ruddery Stone Circle for rituals and that energy that is ancient can lie dormant in a stone circle like this that can feel stagnant or dead but when people come back and practice rituals they rejuvenate the old energy calling it back, reigniting what was once there, stirring up the old and mingling it with the new and that the circle is believed to also have healing properties. So it is said. So within the stone circle there are what are called Boulogne stones and one version of the Celtic tradition is that these carvings or these holes sometimes are cup-shaped were designed to capture rainwater and this rainwater because of its purity would have healing properties because it was in such a sacred place. And there's also stories of people of old leaving milk and milk was a sign of purity within these stones as an offering of nourishment to the fairy folk who may also occupy such stone circles. Thank you for watching, but please like and subscribe as this will encourage future productions.